talk to him. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the show. My name is Matt. And joined with me today for this episode's very special, special day for Matt, uh, because yeah, do do do. I got my man Steve over here from Going in Raw, Wrestle Juice, Friendo Club TV. Steve, thank you very much for coming on, buddy. Well, thank you for having me. I appreciate it. We're gonna we have a very structured uh, plan for today. Oh yeah. Uh, I assume I've got the program right here. Yeah. And uh, we have very specific bullet points we're gonna talk about I, today. Right? It took an hour to put that together and get that to you because. Uh, <laughs> We have to go deep dive these uh, these very hard hitting topics. Well, it's WrestleMania season. Everybody's very there. You know, wrestling, from what I understand, is cool again. That's, that's what a big, big Samoan guy said to us one time. I'll uh, I'll you know, next time I go to the bar, mm. I'm going to be like, hey, guys, I got good news. Wrestling is cool again. Are you going to just and shout then... that as you walk through bar? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm going to shout that. Saddle up, fuckers. <laughs> Wrestling's cool again. It's like, oh, why dude. is he here again? <laughs> he comes yeah. in every God, Monday. It's, fucking, it's noon. What are you doing here? <laughs> There's two guys in the bar. Get out. Yeah. Line them up. <laughs> well, speaking of WrestleMania, I guess the first thing I did want to talk to you, I had a loosely pamphlet idea of what I wanted to talk to you about, but yeah. I did actually want to get your thoughts on WrestleMania, but so not like I was on, hold on. I was on, I was on another white guy, YouTube channel uh, last oh, yeah? week. It was Greg Morgan. Good Mike comment to good work. Mike comment, uh, good Mike work commentaries. And like that dude had like the most structured. It was oh, like, no. we're going to rank. We're going to rank the rocks WrestleMania matches. And so I came into it and the thing that I forgot to do was rank anything. And so like we got sure. started, it was like, oh, we're literally ranking these. Hold on a second. <laughs> uh, Sultan Shamrock. What did you Hogan. expect? <laughs> I don't know. I thought, I don't know. <laughs> I, did, I didn't expect that. Even though he told me that's what we were going to do. Like, did he tell you ahead of time too? And you're just like, so oh. this is more, this is more my jam. Oh yeah. He told me like two weeks ahead of time. And he was already doing that on his channel with like Brian Zane and Solo Monster and stuff. And so you just, just chose not like, to do your homework, like period. Like, dude, yeah, man, I just I fly by the seat of my pants. That's why I like it here because, like, you know what? There's no expectations. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's so my anyway. mess. That's what my message should have been. It's like, don't worry, I have don't very little expectations here. of yeah. you. <laughs> exactly. So wait, what were you saying? I don't know something about WrestleMania. What do you think about the? Bill, I guess the whole show, don't go match by match, but I need to know, like, yeah. what do you think of the whole card, the whole show overall, Triple H's baby, a little less Vince sprinkled in there, but, you know, WrestleMania 40, what do you think of the overall show? Uh, I, I Number one, I love that I think this is the first time that they've done, since they've done the two-night thing, this is the first time that they've had a story go from night one into night two, like night yeah. one has stakes into night two. I always loved when wrestle kingdom was like two nights and it's like, okay, well what happens on night one affects night two. And I really love that aspect of it. Um, and I like, I, I, I love the card itself. I don't think there's a stinker on there. And in fact, there's like the potential for some of these matches to be just absolutely killer. Like, Gunther versus Sami Zayn. I know I talked a lot of shit about Sami Zayn on uh, the character on uh, Going in Raw today. <laughs> you have to preface by saying the character. No, because I'm telling you. I know, you, people like, are like, you don't like, you don't like Sami, you hate him. <laughs> I Here's the thing. I'm a huge Sami Zayn fan. And in fact, like all the, all the wrestlers, I'm like, man, these people like kill themselves out there. They do a hell of a job. And so but I F. want Chad like. Gable. There's so much. He, I love Chad Gable, but there's so much negativity and toxicity that I feel compelled to like, I feel like it's necessary to be like, I am talking about the writing of these characters, how these characters are behaving on screen and not like the people behind them because wrestling is that weird thing. It's not like yeah. I can say, oh, you know, fuck Darth Vader. And then people will be like, wow, this guy said fuck Darth Vader. How does the actual Darth Vader feel about that? No, because he's not a real guy. And so it's like, when <laughs> I you say imagine like, if Sammy, that's the reality <laughs> right, whoa, in, whoa, wrestling, whoa. in wrestling, in wrestling, it's like, if I say, oh man, Sam Zayn, what an idiot. 
people will be like, what are you talking about? He's got this like, uh, you know, charity and all this kind of I'm like, no, yeah. not the real guy. Like, you know, there's so much negativity that people will like take what you, what you say and then run with it. And I'm like, look, I think that the training montage was unintentionally hilarious because like, see, yeah, step bear, step because step Sammy Zane evidently just i don't know how to wrestle to the, he, well he doesn't go to the gym apparently he was like what is this contraption i'm on right now and uh but that being said he is probably one of the best wrestlers like if he was an AEW or new japan yeah he'd, he'd be match of the year guy like every single time and so and so him versus gunther that's like that could be an absolutely just amazing match right there um eo sky versus bailey i mean yeah. god damn they are like two of the best wrestlers on the planet and that is going to be a killer match if they give it a, a, enough time and i think there's like a bunch of matt even like the u.s title triple threat i think that can be an absolutely just killer match logan paul's been doing some really good work lately. that one that one can be a sleeper i got to kind of low on the totem pole like just in terms of w what my expectations are but i'm like you've got logan paul kills it like i don't like logan paul as a person outside of the thing but he kills it as a heel he and he's yeah. great at it and he's great in the ring. and i want to see him do a crazy spot and land an arc into an rko or something like it's gonna be fun and mm -hmm. yeah that's one of those like almost dark horse matches where yeah i don't have anything to expect but maybe 15 minutes and that's probably the other thing like do you find that or do you think that the matches are going to get a lot of time because it seems like it's like six ish matches per night it's not overloaded where it's like 10 to 14 right so like are they going to get do you think like 20 minutes of pop main events get 40 I mean, they're they're also like um i think they're starting like an hour earlier than usual yeah. yeah yeah and so like yeah i mean it seems like what is it it was like six on one night and seven on the other night so yeah i mean if you factor in like a half hour for the entrances for the main event um yeah i i, I feel like if last year is any indication you know, like, for example, and I know Ronda Rousey recently, like, I think in her book, she said something like Charlotte sort of, you know, just decided to give her match more time. Mm. And I'm like, what a baller move, because that was one of my Charlotte versus Rhea Ripley last year was one of my favorite matches of the year. And so um, I hope I mean, I think last year they they did that, although it was maybe a little bit tainted by Vince. But I think last year they gave everybody enough time. I'm taking a look at Wikipedia right now to double check my math on that one. But last year, uh, let's see here. 11 minutes, 8 minutes, 16, 14, 14. Everything had, everything was basically like 10 plus minutes. I don't know, at l around the 15 minute mark. Yeah. You could do a lot in that time. I mean, you know, maybe some can go a little bit longer, but um, Rhea Ripley. Oh, Rhea Ripley. Wow. Rhea Ripley versus Charlotte Flair was 23 minutes really that, was, that wow. was that was the second longest match and the longest one of night one rather of night sure. one that was the second second longest match and the first longest match was only 45 seconds longer that was the main event that i was gonna say it's set, yeah jeez yeah so um so yeah i don't know you know if they're starting and and there was there was eight matches on the card well does that count? Oh yeah, oh yeah. No, Shane doesn't count as a match. Pat Pat McAfee versus Miz. Was Shane a thirty nine with the squat with the quads? Was that, that 39? was on night two though? That was night two, yeah. but that was last year. Okay. Yeah, and it's official. It was officially Snoop Dogg defeated the Miz. Boy, that's my <laughs> WrestleMania moment of all time. Thing. That's number His one. Legs exploded like, like daddies. <laughs> they acted like nothing, like he no, didn't exist. Just, he was gone. That was insane. He's eviscerated no from replays, the timeline. No replays, just not. That was insane. God, I love that so much. Do you think we get like so? One of my one of my theories, and I don't know. Did you see uh, Stone Cold on Twitter or whatever he posted on Instagram with the beers? He's like, "Oh hell yeah, oh, I got yeah. me some. I got some bunny eggs and a beer." <laughs> yeah, yeah. Do you think that's Cody? Kind of. My my thinking of all of this is very Avengers. The Rock is Thanos. Cody is Captain America. Seth is Iron Man. I don't know who Jay is. I don't know what Roman is. Loki, probably not. Roman would be oof. Ouch. Yeah. Yeah. Because Rock, Rock is, is Thanos. Thanos. Unless he's Galactus, and then Roman's Thanos. Oh wow. Uh. Yeah. Hmm, boy, that's a good one. I don't know. Yeah. Who was like the Who was like the number two villain? Two. The, I guess it was always just like Loki. the. Well. Yeah kind of yeah but, but then it was like it's not loki 
I would probably say then like barely. he's got to be Thanos and then maybe like Rock is Galactus. So okay, world yeah, I eater. Guess that, that could work. I mean, but yeah. I, but Rock is very much Thanos. Like that's what he's doing right now. And yeah, I kind of thought yeah, in yeah. my head they're going to have the night 2 is going to be the big schmaz. And I think you and Larson even talked about this too on your show or it's like mm-hmm. it could get really silly borderline this is ridiculous if you see John Cena comes out yeah. and Stone Cold's music hits. But it's that moment of Endgame yeah, of right, yeah. Bloodline rules everyone's taken out and then I can I can totally like Steve did it la- last year with Vince and all that. He came yeah, out right, both nights. Yeah. He was a surprise because he did Owen's match and he came out later for yeah. the Pat McAfee thing. That was a surprise. Yeah. It's WrestleMania. I don't know. He do it again. And what does he do? He just clears house and he gives Rock a stunner to equalize it. So I feel <laughs> it's like so I bad. Don't... Like it's so it's it's amazing, but it's also terrible. <laughs> yeah. Like, don't get me wrong. I would pop big for if the glass broke. I would I would mark out huge. Uh. I kind of feel like Triple H and like Brian Gewertz and Heyman and Rock probably have a bit more integrity <laughs> because like I feel like they're trying to tell a story that needs to exist within its own boundaries. Like you unless look, if Cody sent Austin some beers, okay. Bunny eggs. Yeah, and but yeah, I mean, maybe because I thought the same thing. Everybody thought the same thing. If like Larson and I justified it by saying, look, if night one, they do a thing where backstage Austin runs into the rock and he runs a foul of the rock. But here's the thing. Cody's Cody has to do some of this on his own merit, you know, and I'm not saying he's got to take on the entirety of the Legion of Doom by himself, because clearly that's not going to happen. It's going to be bloodline rules. And then you're going to get Jay, Seth, and I don't know, I'm probably like Jay and Seth. You could bring out Cena because of the solo stuff from uh, whatever the last pay-per-view that this last pay-per-view you could do like Cena could make some sense. But like, I kind of feel like the trip, number one, Triple H really likes rolling with, you know, obviously the rock is a bit of an outlier, Mm -hmm. but like he likes rolling with his own crew. Like he didn't try to wheel the undertaker back out. He didn't try. Brock is gone and Brock would have been at the show, but he's got a really good roster right now. And I don't know if Cody wins the universal title because Stone Cold ran afoul of the rock backstage. Would have popped the crowd? Sure, absolutely. But like, I don't know. And maybe the justification is, well, Roman has rock. And so like the the guy that can take out rock is stone cold. Maybe you can justify it that way. I just kind of feel like the story is is like playing out in a way that you don't need this sort of like complete left turn character coming in and, so and, and, do, and dropping a bunch of stunners, you know? Okay, but you and you and Larson were talking about this, and I agree. I, I had the same sentiment was, if Night 2 is going to be a schmoz, and let's forget Austin for a second, like he's not doing this, and you yeah. do end up with like Jay, the potentials of Jay and Seth, in character, aren't they, Could don't they all have the potential of turning on Cody because Cody is not going out to help them during their matches because he won't. He's not going to go out during the Seth Drew match. He's not going to go out for Jimmy J match, assuming they lose those matches. So it's like, why? Like you guys said this too. It's like, why would they come out and help Cody at the end of yeah. it all when they did not? He did not reciprocate. It's oh, it's been about Cody. Yeah, and get and yeah, because, that kind of yeah. goes back to Kevin Owens' original thought of like, I can't trust this guy. Yeah. You shouldn't trust him. Drew McIntyre as well. Mm-hmm. They never really explained that, but I, I kind of find there's a little bit of a risk there. I mean, it's WWE. Maybe they'll just ignore it. Well, no, I think, you know, one of the things that they've done, you always, you always listen to a heel that makes good points. And Roman Reigns said it perfectly. He, he says the same thing everybody else says. Cody's a politician. And a politician can get people to work for them outside of their own best interests. You can, politicians can get people to vote for them outside of their own best interests. And so I think the story of Cody should be, he's able to manipulate everybody into helping him. And he doesn't reciprocate that. So by the end of WrestleMania, he's holding that title high and everybody's else like, 
we did this for him and what did we get out of it? Why did we just do that? Because he's that savvy, because he is a politician. That's what they do. And so the story after WrestleMania is now Seth is thinking, well, I don't have anything. And Jay's yeah. like, I'm not main event Jay because I lost to my dipshit brother. And uh, I don't know who else is out there. Uh, tell, hopefully Sami Zayn loses to Gunther. Um, <laughs> but everybody but that, he, that that Cody kind of aligned with is basically yeah. looking at him now going, you got what you wanted. Where right. are we in all of this? Right, exactly. And he's sort of kind of exposed or at least they can use that on him and be like, Hey, like, and he, he could, and he could easily say, you guys wanted to get rid of the bloodline. What did you think was going to happen? Like I was the guy in line to take the title off Roman and that guy, and you guys helped me out. We got rid of the bloodline and yeah, there's going to be some blood that shed in the meantime. And that's the world heavyweight championship. And Jay, you look like an idiot cause you lost to your dumb brother. So Sammy they, did that, too many squats. <laughs> yeah, Sammy, I'm sorry you shouldn't have aligned with Gable because he made you do squats. Um, so yeah, I, I think that that just adds to the intrigue. It's like, man, this guy's a politician because Cody's got to be. There's there has to be. He has he has set all this stuff up. I and mean, if you remember, he was the guy who brought Jay to mm-hmm. Raw, and mm-hmm. everybody hates Jay at the time. Everybody hated Jay. Like they were like, what the hell is this guy doing here? And nobody pointed their finger at Cody. Nobody was like, hey, dude, what's up with this? Kevin Owens was never like um, Cody or Sami Zayn was never like, "Uh, Cody, it's because of you that Kevin Owens is gone. My best friend is gone. And like, I don't have a pursuit of the tag titles anymore. That could have still been a thing. Nobody. He always gets away. And so, like, I feel like you would add so much more complexity into his story after WrestleMania. If you've got the Avengers sitting around being like. Well, Captain America got what he wanted, but like the rest of us, we all lost out. You know, I think it'd be kind of interesting. So where do you think, because you brought, you brought up Roman for two, and I, I suspect Cody, at the end of it all, Cody walks out holding that belt one way or another. I don't, yeah, sure. all the in-betweens and yeah, it's Cody's going to hold that belt and they go off the air. Where do you think? think they're going to go with Roman because we know he's going to be current schedule four to six times a year probably like four the thing with the rock is inevitable but the one thing I I was questioning was Roman's Roman's current state I guess I'll back up Roman's current character in this whole story I feel like he is third fourth wheel he is like chill Roman ah, and especially on raw he was just like He's got this. The Rock's got this. Like, eh. and I think that will play into Rock's anger towards him being like, I did everything. Like, I won the tag match. I beat Cody. I did all this. All you had to do was pin him in night two, and you didn't. And I think that could help motivate it. So then where do you think they go with Roman post-Mania as little as he'll probably be on TV? Do you think they set him up to be a face? To go up against the rock because he'll brought like this final boss is so cool uh yeah. and it's fun to watch and yeah. maybe it's all kind of happy accident they just keep leaning into it as they go mm-hmm. but i don't see rock flipping a switch in eight months being like okay i'm a face again he's final boss so does roman become this crazy baby face like this ultimate baby face that wwe always wanted or does he just stick as he stay as he is so I think Roman, I don't know. I mean, the thing is like, I just don't know. Cause I know they're, they're really heavy. They, they understand the thing that I love about it is they understand the story is the thing. So it's not like it can be a Brock of a couple of years ago thing where he just sort of shows up, does his little dance and then has a match either wins or loses, depending on, you know, who they want to get over. Um, I don't think they're going to do that with him. So you would think that if Roman is going to remain on, let's say he does obviously mania SummerSlam, the two Saudi shows, uh, he doesn't even need to do the rumble, um, from now on. So like that's sort of the four matches that he does every year. You got to have him around. I mean, the, the power of Roman reigns is that the bloodline story can be told without a lot of Roman and rock actually physically being there. I think the bigger question is what do Jimmy and solo do after, after WrestleMania? Because 
if there is still a bloodline presence, then you can continue the story. Rock can show up on the raw for me. I think Rock is committed to WWE probably enough. And maybe, maybe if they give Roman the big money, um, he'll be around enough to set up because he got he'll after Manny, he'll be gone. And yeah. then I don't know, maybe around money in the bank, you can like put like the, the raw or SmackDown after money in the bank, you bring Roman back to do like, you know, however many weeks from then until SummerSlam. I think there might be a Saudi show in there somewhere. Or maybe mm. that's not till later. Um, but I mean, the, the, the short answer is I, I don't, I honestly don't know. I do think that it's going to be Roman as a face. I think that the rock, there's no way the rock can get rid of that tag. The final boss, he's going to be bad rock. He understands this is super over. People yeah. love this. They don't want the Hollywood rock where he sounds like he's on, you know, Coke. They want this version. 1998 rock, yeah. you know, is the way to go. And it's hilarious. You can tell rock is having a blast doing it. And yeah, I, 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 the short answer is this. I could see maybe, maybe it's this. Maybe at SummerSlam, we get Cody Roman too. And I think Roman could even be a face doing that. Mm. He can come back and say, listen, we put you through the motions for the last two years. And now I'm back to see if I can smash you on my own. Yeah. Can I do it yeah, myself was... and no one else is around? And yeah. Roman was cut. Co Roman's coasting right now. Yeah. Like he is like, he's like, oh, rock. Thank you for making this so easy. Night one, we're going to smash him. It's easy. Night two, I'll coast. Well, he's going to have a million things going on by the finish of that match. He could be thinking, you know what? I've been humbled. All right, Cody, I give you props. You're the guy. But now I want to see if I could do it properly one on one. Cody gets his proper like finish, like straight up one on one beats Roman Reigns clean um, with no bloodline stuff. Mm -hmm. Maybe that angers the rock. And then you can take that into, you know, whatever. Maybe it's Survivor Series. You could even do yeah. like a team bloodline or, or team rock versus team Roman. Maybe not. I don't know. But that can motivate, you know, going forward. Maybe. I mean, I think it'd be kind of awesome if rock if rock somehow got that title in advance of next year's WrestleMania. So that rock Roman 41 is going to be for the title. Well, that's what I wonder too, is I, with what was going on on TV, especially like the culminating kind of with the beat down of Cody. I mean, there's last night, but then the one before in the back of the rain, <laughs> This is a piece of shit, Doc. <laughs> he smashed his head into the pharaoh oh, <laughs> on the sticker on the truck. But that was too much. I thought th if you took, if you didn't follow it so intently, you would think on paper that the match is Rock versus Cody. Mm -hmm, yeah. That's just what it's looked like. And this Roman Reigns guy is here. Like, I'm saying if you're very casual, you'd be like, well, Rock is doing all these promos and beating the crap out of this one guy who's challenging him. That's what it looks like the whole yeah. time. And I'm at this point where I'm like, I just, I, I can, can I get Rock and Cody at SummerSlam for the yeah. title? And to your point, Rock takes it off of him. And Cody, because Cody, I don't want to see whoever, if it's Cody, I do not want to see the next champion. I, either champion, the world heavyweight or the undisputed, go on these two-year runs. I like I seeing, kind of like you, I like to see more attitude era in terms of the belt moved around. I yeah. like, I don't need, I like the surprise, oh my god, you won it on Raw, but yeah, I like to see like a three-month run and a six-month run and the long stories of the belts, we've done it. I kind of want to refresh a bit. Because even Seth is the first one for this new world title and he's had it the whole time. It's been long, mm -hmm. long road. So, I, I wouldn't be mad if I got Rock winning the belt at SummerSlam off Cody. Cody's destroyed mm -hmm. and off Cody, or, uh, Rock and Roman go to the for the belt at 41. Yeah. I which may have been one of the original yeah. plans, right? That could but now be. it's kind of yeah. flipped. And then I don't know yeah. what you do with Cody. I don't know what you do with Cody. <laughs> I mean, dude, you know, Cody's one of those guys who's proven oddly in WWE to be exactly what the fans want. And so I think... Cody is the kind of guy who would probably actually appreciate losing to the rock because he knows that he's always going to be on solid ground. Yeah. Like Cody will be cheered by the fans as long as he keeps on doing what he's doing. And Cody's really good at losing like, and fans love when people lose, like, yes, you get the redemption love. after you are pushed and pushed and pushed. 
and then you lose. And it's like makes people want you even more when they even hinted that Cody wasn't going to get his WrestleMania spot. You know, it's nobody's complaining about Cody being well, some people are complaining about Cody being shoved down our throats, but like the larger fan base is not complaining. And so, you know, if he loses at SummerSlam, if The Rock basically cheats him out of his title at SummerSlam, that's going to get the people. You don't want Cody with a really long reign because the people are going to get bored of him. Yep. That's what I worry about, too, is that he's he gets cold because and the fans start to turn of like, all right, we're kind of sick of your big, long winded speeches every night on Raw. Can you and you just beaten everybody like you're going through now, everybody else who we know isn't really going to beat you. Like, can you please go fight Roman Rock, somebody that is a real contender punk? Yeah, like somebody where we go. This could happen. Not Cody versus Shinsuke. Cody versus Seth again. I I don't buy those. Well, the cool thing is, I mean, they've set it up so that there are like a couple people out there that could like Drew. Look, if Drew wins against Seth, which I think is going to happen, then like that sort of takes him out of the equation. But they have set up some people and Rock is such they've given Rock so much money. And, you know, he's proven that with his social media, he can be a presence in yeah. the WWE universe and not be on the programming. So like him winning the title at, at SummerSlam, you know, maybe Cody then is like, okay, well, let me pivot over to Drew McIntyre if he's still champion at the time or Damian Priest or whoever's champion. And I, I, I do think though that like what we're, what we're going to see is going to be less of this story's over we're going to start on a brand new feud and more of a, okay, where can this continuous story go? Triple H is huge on quote unquote, the story never ending. I thought it was Mm -hmm. really interesting listening to him talk about working with Bray Wyatt um, on the Bray Wyatt documentary um, because he understands that Bray was all about the story and Triple H is like, okay, he even said this once and Larson and I had said this endlessly, you know, when, when Bray was still with us, it was how do you take his cool ideas and and then run ropes? And Triple H literally said the exact same thing in the documentary. Oh, he did said, he? <laughs> you know, well, this is how we put it. He said, he said, you know, Bray has all these great ideas and he's got me intrigued and this is all really cool. But at the end of the day, it goes ding ding. That was how he put it, which is like not far that's away true. from us. No, saying, it's right not. Ropes. That's that's dead on. At the like, end of the dude, day, it's kind of funny. <laughs> I find it funny. Yeah. You got to run ropes. At the end of the day, it goes ding ding, and it's like, yeah, it does. You got to you, you, you look like a weirdo running ropes. Yep. And so, um, so yeah, I, I don't know. I, I think that like Triple H is obsessed with he, Triple H understands that. There is so much with pro wrestling that hasn't been, that had not been explored because Vince did things basically on a whim. Mm-hmm. And Triple H understands that like soap operas, for example, they don't end. It's yep. just continuous stories. And so like Cody leaving WrestleMania and his Avengers understanding that they just sort of got dicked over. Well, now you can have Jay come after him. You can yep. have Seth try to revisit that and be like, hey, you didn't even give me my title. Like you, you couldn't let me be the guy at WrestleMania. You dragged me into your shit. You convinced me. And now you're just riding off into the sunset. No, I'm going to get drafted over to your brand and then we're going to have it out. Um, That's the so other cool I thing think, too, Steve is sorry. Yeah. It's like the draft is yeah. probably a month after, but sorry, go on. Yeah. Well, also Cody's going to be on Netflix. <laughs> like I was thinking the same thing happen. of, yeah, I was thinking the same thing as like uh, with all the stuff with the rock and the way WWE is producing the product right now. And I'm talking about like, just the, like I saw the review, I missed it on raw, but like the shot of drew and Seth backstage and drew yelled at him. Like, he's like, I'm not dead yet. And he's like, not yet. And he yelled to him. And then it followed him all the way out to the ring. I was yeah. like, Thank you. I've been wanting this for 20 years. Just yeah. follow the freaking guy yeah. backstage. It's so cool. And I think this is uh, plus the rock and everything he's doing and kind of pushing things verbally and all that. I think it's starting to plant seeds of this is kind of what it could look and feel like on Netflix, where it's its own ecosystem, its own actual universe yeah where shit's just happening and not to mention not just raw like i know they have the rights to raw but it's all these supplemental programming they can do off of it Mm -hmm. they document everything everything's a camera everything's 
like it could be raw but there could be just raw backstage as another yeah. series and it's just these yeah. endless in and outs and documentary style things right because yeah i i feel like that's what we're getting so what do you think they're gonna do come netflix because that's not that far like in the world of wwe your your plan and tv i would think you're kind of pre-planning that a couple of months from now get through mania by SummerSlam. you know what you're doing with netflix mm -hmm. in terms yeah. of tv and programming so what do you think they're gonna do with that which is netflix as a whole and the approach they'll take I, well, I think I, I do think that it, I guess what'll be interesting to see because USA has SmackDown for five years. Yeah. Peacock right now has I, I definitely think that the Peacock premium live event stuff is probably going to end up on Netflix, too. It is actually. Yeah. They well, did. internationally it is. But for the United States. Correct. That's I'm not, international. That deal hasn't. Yeah. We're in the Canada. Oh, right. you're, yeah. You're in Canada, aren't you? Yeah. Oh, so I get right. So right now we get it where it's it's split stuff like it's so it's um we have it on like Sportsnet, which is like the, the cable channel for sports. And you got to get WWE Network as an add on for your cable provider. Oh, wow. OK. And that's like 15, 20 bucks a month. And now when they say and then, yeah, that, and then your cable package of like got to get all the channels, mm. get all the wrestling, all the WWE shit. But when they're going to go and switch it over to um, Netflix. I'm stoked because it's all the pay-per-views and it's raw. And then I don't have to pay the extra stuff because you're already buying Netflix yeah, for the family. That's really like, cool. Yeah. So I'm like, I get all the PLEs and Netflix and raw all in one. And I'm already just going to watch SmackDown and NXT mm -hmm. and I'm good. Like I got to move to Canada. Um, yeah, I really like, I really like California though. Um, yeah, it's warmer, but, uh, but yeah, I, I do. I, I don't know. I, I think that, I think that they are looking at Netflix as a really, really, really big deal. And they're going to ju try to juice it the way they juiced SmackDown. And so, you know, Rock's getting paid a lot of money. He's obviously got a lot going on. But I do expect Rock to be part of their programming in some way, shape or form on a regular basis. I think he probably he'll probably end up continuing to be sort of the Thanos and like in the Marvel Universe. Thanos wasn't in every movie, you know, he was yeah. hardly in any of the movies, but his presence was always there. Everybody referred to him. He was in a couple of the post credit scenes like he can be the final boss and cut those little social media promos and be kind of a puppet master. And so, like, I think also if Drew McIntyre ends up accepting some bloodline help from Seth Rollins, Drew McIntyre could be the bloodline representative in WWE even though yeah. he's not part of the actual bloodline. But if it's like, okay, Roman's going to go because now he's on the outs. If they do the thing where bloodline loses, I'm sorry, where like Roman loses in the, and the bloodline, they just had this overbooked mess and the rock raises Cody's, I'm sorry. And Roman raises Cody's hand. That could be the thing that pisses rock off. And then Roman goes away. We don't know where he is. Final boss sort of sticks around as like a presence. Yeah. Like, you know, he's got the bloodline guys. Maybe they do kind of like a pseudo bloodline with Drew as the main guy, Jimmy and Solo as his as his two guys, because he accepted their help. And Rock's like, well, this guy's a champion. He could be the last hope for Cody. And they could be doing this stuff where they tease Drew versus Cody because Rock still wants to get back at Cody. And then you have some sort of alliance down the line between Cody and Roman. There's a lot of different ways you can do that. And Roman ends up being a face just by virtue of, you know what? Cody, Cody did come from a W that, you know, the, 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 the second rate brand and, and dethroned me. So I, I show him begrudging respect, even though Rock wants nothing to do with that. Um, that could be the split that happens too. It, it might not just be that Roman loses. It could be that Roman loses and then acknowledges Cody Rhodes. But it's like you said too, it's that the bloodline, it spreads further beyond like its original incarnation of what it yeah. was. And it turns into this, yeah, this final boss version, Rock's version of it, which is like, mm -hmm. I don't need family. I'm bringing in yeah. Drew and I'm doing all this. Yeah. I think too, with Netflix, with Rock's involvement and how much he's, probably getting paid seemingly getting paid for it all i think you you can also wwe and the rock can look at it like movie deals where you get 
the rock you got adam sandler for like okay you get six netflix movies that's the contract yeah and pump them out every three to six months i got a new adam sandler movie on netflix similar case can be made with the rock but instead it's within wwe and it's yeah. not matches but like moments or story arcs where he's yeah. more on tv like he is now comes in and just whoops guys like he doesn't have to wrestle matches but he comes in and helps drew mm-hmm. rock bottom cody and yeah. slap him around and then drew yeah. does all the work and rocks just yeah. around like you said but that gets mm-hmm. more eyeballs i think too on netflix and the product where you want rock on that face of netflix yeah. oh yeah and i think that's why they brought him in to be not just the face of sort of the business arm of wwe and tko but you know to 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 be a presence on you know for the netflix deal and even maybe like the usa deal on smackdown i don't know we'll see how the brands shake out but i do kind of feel that with the netflix thing they're gonna want a more juiced up version of raw um wouldn't shock me if they allowed you know some amount of cursing and maybe a bit more blood um you know i know that tko i get it's a publicly traded company and you don't want to make the kids cry too much but as we saw this past week they were cool letting the kids cry about cody you know like they were fine with that they were like they let cody bleed that to me is a big sign that come netflix they might allow cursing you know like when the rock shows up you might hear him you know say shit here and there what do you think they're gonna do with mr punk this this guy Cause like he's he's I saw the Ariel Hawani interview mm-hmm, yeah. the tell all I, I wanna I wanna p- pick your brain on that for a second but like where before you do like where do you think Punk is going to be in like when he returns kind of deal like assuming it's like SummerSlam it's kind of my guess he's he says he's like I'm I'm good like I could go yeah. but they're being protective of me I think I think it comes down to timing and story yeah. and Triple H will be very careful of like well. Maybe after Money in the Bank, maybe SummerSlam will heat you up and get you back in there. What do you think they're going to do with Punk? You know, I think there's two questions. I think it's what do they want to do with Punk and what's Punk's body going to let him do? Yeah. Um, I mean, he showed it. He came up immediately. He was in the Rumble. And in the Rumble, he, you know, he tore his triceps on a fairly, like, innocuous move. Like, it was just a future shock DDT. Um. And so I, that's probably got to be their biggest concern is like, how much can we, I think that if punk was bulletproof, he would be one of the world champions by like next year, by yeah. like maybe even the mania main event night one or night two next year. I don't know if his body is going to allow for that. Um, and that sucks. I mean, we saw it in a W he had 22 matches that were all great, that were all a lot of fun. And then, you know, the brawl out thing happens. Maybe it happened during the the fight backstage. Maybe it happened during the match. He seemed as, I, I read his response on that on, you know, I can't talk about my triceps tear necessarily because it happened during the fight. Yeah. Um, so, you know, you get into a real life fight, that's one thing. You jump into the crowd, that's a bit of a fluke. All right, so just maybe bad luck. But then he comes back and his first televised thing, you know, match the Royal Rumble. He busts his other triceps there. Um, You know, he's my age, so he's like old. And I I really would love for him to get a proper run because I think he'd be a killer world champion. Um, They're setting this thing, you know, Drew McIntyre has been doing such a great job continuing to, to keep CM Punk in his name. And that promo from last week was obviously pretty outstanding. Um, so, I mean, the bottom line is it it depends on what his body's going to do. That being said, if he comes back at, let's say he comes with, you know, Drew McIntyre walks into clash of the castle, June 15th, punk has already mentioned on the Ariel Hawani thing. Summertime is a possibility for him. If he walks into clash of the castle after the trademark buzz, or after the trade, a bug rather, uh, Drew McIntyre standing there with his World Heavyweight Championship, which he either just won or just successfully defended. Mm-hmm. Punk walks in, you know, the music hits, crowd's going absolutely nuts, and they just have a face off. Punk is ready to go. He doesn't have the thing on. Yeah. Then maybe you're looking at Drew versus Punk at SummerSlam as a possibility if you want to put the World Championship on the line there. Maybe Punk is on the verge of winning and pre and no. Priest can't cash in. At no, he'd have play. to. 
It's gotta yeah, be before. Priest has got to yeah. drop this thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so, uh, so I don't know. I, 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 you know, I think punk, I think sadly the sky is the limit. Uh, ironically, the sky is the limit for punk, but the body is the limit. And yeah. I think creatively speaking, they would push him to the moon. I really believe that because he gets such great reactions. His merch sells like crazy. He's the best promo they got. Um, and, and I think everybody's probably getting along so well right now that ironically now when punk, I don't think he really cares about that stuff. I, I believe him. I take him at his word into the interview. I don't think he really cares about that stuff. He wants to come and, and, and do cool stuff, but I think they would put the title on him, but they got to see first if he's going to hold up. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, I, I I don't know what the answer is with it, but it does sound like if Punk is going to be in WWE system for foreseeable future years, even in some capacity, he even said in the interview, right, where he's like, "Yeah, I'll wrestle. Like, I want to wrestle. Like, I'm." A, but he kept saying, "Like, I got a Booker's mind. I got a Booker's mind." And he did drop little hints of talking to Shawn Michaels and 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 being able to hang out with other people or meet other wrestlers, go to NXT. I really do see him in that next hbk level like i could see him going to nxt and work doing it with Shawn michaels or taking it over in a new version of it and with him being the literal face of it it's a big brand push arguably it does more than hbk now because hbk is just so far in the background is what i mean in terms of like he's not out there every week yeah and it wouldn't it doesn't click as much with the newer audience i feel as if you had yeah. punk coming out on tv front and center being i'm the general manager and he's literally writing the book and doing that in nxt making a little more grungy make it a little more fun get out of the freaking whatever i you hate know, you arena even if they dolled that place up if if you rebranded nxt because i agree with you i think that one day he's going to take over nxt and maybe he'll maybe he'll take over creative one day i don't know it seems like Shawn michaels probably next in line for that but I think Shawn, My uh, Shawn Michaels is older than Triple H, so who knows like what he wants to do. But um, but yeah, no, I, I I absolutely think that if you one day if they rebrand NXT, um, visually speaking, with more of a CM Punk aesthetic, it'd be my favorite TV show. I, yeah. I and and with him with his creative, um, I mean the guy has shown that he's incredibly creative, and uh, and you know him and the MJF stuff, I have no doubt is proof that him and MJF are both incredibly well uh, versed in how to tell those really good stories. I think that'd be like my favorite wrestling program. I just, I'd love to see him. And, and I think it's a distinct possibility. That's what we're going to get. I absolutely yeah. think that, that could happen. Yeah. Cause I don't see, I, do, I just don't like, like you, I think, I don't know how long he is going to go in the ring where it's like, I want to see him go for five years and just yeah, I'd love that. do good. And his final run and like collision it's interesting watching him then after all the injuries and everything, then the brand separation. Yeah. He was in a lot more tag matches, mm -hmm. um, but he was wrestling like every week on collision for that yeah, period. And the Joe match is great. The all in match was. Awesome. Yeah. And like in that interview too, he's like, I'm just going to go tear it up with Joe. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and then I'm out. Awesome. And I quit. Great match. I, I think it's hilarious though, that he was like, I quit and I'm going to go do this match. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah and then i'm out, i'm literally out of here yeah. and, I, and i'm gone i i found it so fascinating what was your biggest takeaway from that that interview because i sat there with my eyes glued like he's saying so much more and very th i think very thoughtful mm -hmm. not going off and just shooting or just spouting his mouth off i think he was very tactful yeah um but what did you what was your major takeaway from listening to that my major takeaway from that was, and you have to sort of, you have to divorce yourself of the notion that he's not coming from a place of, I'm not going to say bitterness, but he still doesn't have a bit of a chip on his shoulder from AEW. But when he basically validated the WWE way of producing wrestling, as a function of making money and drawing attendance and drawing ratings and said, that's not what AEW is doing. 
when he basically called AEW, he called it a vanity project and no, and you know, in not those words, but yeah. you know, if you're, if your only goal is to put on good matches in his estimation and you're leaving out the WWE stuff, the promos, you know, everything else, the production, um, then it, you're not really in the right, you know, every wrestler that I've ever talked to from, you know, every indie wrestler all the way up to when I've been able to interview WWE people and onto the side, they're in, they're in wrestling to make money and bringing people into your house is what you're supposed to be doing. And I thought it was interesting that a company seemingly custom made for CM Punk you know, referencing basically being a conglomeration of Ring of Honor, where Punk would, you know, cut his cut his teeth, uh, you know, sort of elements of New Japan and PWG, where, you know, New Japan is where CM Punk threatened to go in 2011. Um, everything was sort of made for CM Punk. CM Punk rejects. Now, again, it was also the place where he, you know, the, a lot of bad blood there. And so maybe that is something that now that he's getting paid by WWE, he's going to say that WWE's way of doing it is how you should do it. But the guy was also in WWE for a very long time and yeah. understood the sports entertainment aspect of it and understood that you can infuse the, the, the in ring, the work rate stuff with the sports entertainment and Cena versus CM Punk was like one of the greatest rivalries, in my opinion, in WWE, because it was such a butting of heads between John Cena, the sports entertainer and CM Punk, the pro wrestler. And and for him to say, you know, essentially the subtext is the WWE stuff, you know, pro wrestling is not just matches. There's a lot more to it. There's story, there's character. And AEW is focused on let's do work rate stuff. And and that's going to be the end all be all. And 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 him saying that no 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 WWE story and character and matches you got to have that recipe right there. You got to have multiple ingredients at the right ratio. That to me was sort of the biggest takeaway. I thought that was really interesting because AEW is a company basically founded on the principles of CM Punk. And you see that guys like Cody, guys like Punk, storytelling mm -hmm. gone. Mm -hmm. for whatever reason back to wwe you know where cody was jokingly always on cody island doing his thing very clear and and AEW in the beginning felt very very split in terms of kenny was like running and i think it was even reported like kenny was running or overseeing the women's division aspect the box had the tag cody was doing his thing slash the main event scene like and you could see it was very split in the beginning. I'm like, this is so cool because it's so new and fresh and mm -hmm. new wrestlers. I'm like, I've never seen these guys or it's really cool to actually see them and not just like in New Japan, but they're actually on like regular TV. Mm -hmm. um, and then, yeah, you get then it starts to really splinter off and like Cody's doing stories over here, but nobody else is doing stories. They're just doing matches. And then like to point of like punk looking at WWE doing a little bit of everything. His best stuff, in my opinion, for AEW is MJF, which was all story. It yeah, was MJF's anyway. relationship with him. It's him looking mm -hmm. up to Punk as a kid. It was, mm -hmm. it's Punk doing his ROH entrance. Like, yeah. it was all, and then you have the match. Mm -hmm. But it was all storytelling in a dog collar match. It was all storytelling yeah. in it. It didn't need to be a dog collar, but it added weight to it. Mm -hmm. And now yeah. it's, to me, AEW, as much as I enjoy seeing what's going on i'm like a lot of it not everything but a lot of it is so much just well here's a great match i'm like I, yes but there are indie shows smaller than aw that put on amazing matches there are yeah. there's new japan wwe there's there it's everywhere like everyone's a great wrestler yeah <laughs> like, yeah, yeah so i'm like yeah. what's the added thing to hook me in and i guess the other thing i'll say is with punk is in that interview, he also referenced like the time, like, and you said this too, like, he came up in WWE. And he also said, like, I came up during a time when it was Triple H, Shawn Michaels, Undertaker, Kane, John Cena, Edge. Like, it's all legends and all sharks, like, all guys yeah. that were attitude era and 80s, 80s and 90s. Um, and they were still going hard during that era when punk was breaking into, into that scene. Yeah. So I don't know. I, I just find it 
fascinating how he approached it. I know there's mm-hmm. different sides to it all of like how everything went down with AEW, but I I kind of agree. Just go figure the punk shill I am, but it, it shed it kind of conf- almost confirmed at least from that perspective. It's not going to be totally accurate, but what I heard him say it kind of checked a few things off that you're kind of like, yeah, I can, I can see that of the approach kind of confirms yeah. the approach of AEW and, and where there might be holes in yeah. terms of their, their storytelling or moving their product forward beyond the 800,000 viewer audience where punk in his position is saying, I'm trying to grow this thing. Yeah. You yeah. don't want to. Yeah. I think, and it's funny cause I do think that, you know, since he left, and especially since the beginning of this year, AEW has sort of shifted. I'm not going to say they've shifted to a WWE type product, but I do think that they've shifted to, you know, trying to inject some more story into what they're doing. And I think that's why it's been better. Yeah. Um, but certainly while Punk was there, there was a period of time where it was like, yeah, we're, we're going to do match, 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 and, you know, not inject a whole lot of story. Um, and so, yeah, I could see that being, you know, a frustration for him. But uh, but yeah, no, I, I thought the entire thing was interesting. I, I thought that he was so wonderfully, brutally honest about the Vince McMahon stuff yeah. um, and at times <laughs> inadvertently hilarious with the way he was putting certain things like the Chris Benoit. You know, we were traveling the roads and never saw him murder anybody in a gym. You know, it's 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 he's a very unique individual in the way that he phrases things and that they're they're brutally honest and they're brutally uh you know he's a very blunt talker and and yet pretty thoughtful and so again like you said all the brawl out stuff was sort of from his perspective you know when he talks yeah. about i very calmly told him this i'm like mm. well, did you <laughs> you know we all think we all think that we say things calmly and as my wife Lacey <laughs> says you know now it's your tone of voice and i'm like i don't know it's just i calmly choked out voice. jack perry yeah and yeah, he was exactly. okay with this <laughs> I did the responsible thing and I choked out. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Uh, Steve, last question, I guess I'll ask you before I wrap up with you here. We could chit chat afterwards post show, but um, I guess my last question is where, who do you think is going to kind of break out um, next year? WWE? Cause it's that like, this is coming out WrestleMania season. So after WrestleMania and I guess even post draft, assuming the draft is in the first month, of after post WrestleMania, who do you see as kind of like the standout? Not picking Cody and like the main main centerpieces, Rock, Roman, Cody. Who do you think is going to kind of have potential to really stand out? I think uh, male or female I think, too. I think Priest is going to be big. I think I think that they are. If you notice, like lately, they've sort of decided. Yeah, it took a little while for them to really sort of choose. I I honestly think they've had like at least four or five different story pivots for judgment day. Um, but I think either a mania sometime between mania and money in the bank priest is going to finally cash in that damn briefcase. He's been, when he gets aggressive in the ring, like he's been, they've been booking him really, really strong, mm-hmm. but it's sort of gone under the radar because it's always in tag matches. And so I think that Priest, I think, number one, they really like Priest. They're just sort of waiting on things to play out with WrestleMania. And I don't know what the story of the briefcase is going to be, how close to the wire it's going to end up being. But if they do, if they end up doing Punk Drew for the title in advance of Money in the Bank, I could see Priest getting it. Um, cashing in, even if they do it like at the Money in the Bank preview, the Men's Money in the Bank match is at the end of the show. It's Priest not the end of the night, nu- yeah. During the title match, before that, um, I don't know if they're going to do it that way or not. But I, I think that Priest is going to have a huge second half of 2024. I think they really like him, and I think they're probably ready to really pull the trigger on him. He seems like the guy who's next in line to to sort of emerge from you know guys who aren't in the main event scene like i don't know i don't know how much of a main event guy main event jay is gonna really be in the end um i don't know if la knight's gonna be like a real main event level world champion guy um but i do think that priest right now is a guy who's kind of under the radar and people sometimes you know where's priest what's he gonna do where's priest what's he gonna do 
I think once he finally pulls the trigger, they're going to go with him in a major way. I really mm. do. What about on the women's side? Um, It would... I mean, I think clearly Tiffany Stratton's going to be a big deal. Yeah. I, I would find it really difficult to believe that by the end of 2025, Chelsea Green wouldn't have broken out. In a I got her pick for Money in the Bank. I think Money in the Bank is probably likely for her in 2025. Yeah. I, I thought 2024 also for a while, but then they sort of dialed it back on her. I think she is so charismatic and talented that they're not going to it's possible that tiffany's going to take some of her some of her mojo i think that's a possibility tiffany's really good in the ring yeah um i think that's a possibility at some point i'd love zoe stark to break out as a character because oh, yeah. i think yeah. that she's got everything everything like her in-ring work is so much fun and she seems like just genuinely a very real person when it comes to like all of her social media stuff. And even when we see her on TV, it's just cracking like a really good story and an angle on her character. That's really going to like, you know, get her to that next level. But I could see her, I could see Zoe start blowing up big time, like over the next 12 months. Cool. I agree. I, I think I see Tiffany Stratton. I saw her live at SmackDown and um, mm. she was pretty over with the crowd like yeah crowd loves pay- yeah yeah they're paying attention and um and chelsea green i've been sitting there for a long time like you gotta yeah. that, i wish that's why i wish there was a mid-card women's title i'd put it right on yeah. chelsea green um zoe stark yeah, same thing like that that would be where i would go and yeah i kind of pick chelsea as next because she's such a yeah like i said she's such a great character you know yeah. it'll be it'll be interesting to see steve my friend Thank you very, very much for oh, giving you're me welcome. your time. Thanks for having me, dude. Uh, Come on, we should do this more often. I hope so. Plug your right. shit if you want to. You don't oh, need to. Yeah. I've got a wrestling channel called Wrestle Juice. I've got a wrestling channel called Going and Raw. It's also a podcast. And we got a wrestling channel called Friendo Club Wrestling. Uh, I'm on Twitter, but I don't really tweet that much. So, yeah, just good go man. to YouTube. That's good stuff. Let me talk to you.